My name is Carrie Silva Waddell. I'm a dog trainer. I've been training dogs for about 10 years. I own a pet business with my husband and we specialize in training dogs that have aggression and socialization issues. I train dogs for the ATF and obedience. I own an animal agency business that I train dogs for movies and commercials. I'm a service dog instructor and I'm certified in training hearing ear dogs for deaf people. And I train and compete in the sport of Mondio Ring with my Belgian Malinois. But most importantly, I just had my first baby. If you just found out you're pregnant, then now's the time to start training your dog and incorporating new rules and a structured routine before your new baby arrives. When I was three months pregnant, I decided to make this video. I was curious and started doing research online just about dogs and babies, and I was shocked that how much misinformation is out there right now. I, I then made it my passion, not only from a dog training perspective, but also from the perspective of an overly protective mother who is worried about how are the dogs going to react and if they're going to accept the baby. Dogs like people work well when they have clear jobs. The purpose of introducing these new training exercises into your routine is to teach your dog their job when the baby comes. Once your baby arrives, your life is going to change drastically. Not only for you, but also for the dogs. After a few all-nighters, behaviors that you normally manage with your dog around the house, such as the dog not pulling on the leash, waiting at the doors, doing sit-stays for their feedings, become more infrequent. As the dog no longer becomes your focus point and receives less of your attention, this could lead to your dog becoming less obedient around the house. Less control of the dog as your baby ages could cause aggression issues, and children can be the target of this result. Dogs are creatures of habit, so the sooner you get on this routine, the less stress you're going to cause for your dog. Don't wait until your baby is here. You don't want your dog to associate the baby with all the changes. I understand there's going to be some cases where you got news of this video and you're staring at your baby, but don't be discouraged because you can still incorporate a lot of the techniques that I used in this video and maybe have a family member or your husband help you out as much as possible, but it can be done and your dog is going to pick up and adapt to the changes with the baby. You're just gonna to have to take the time, as much time as you can whenever the baby is sleeping and just start incorporating these new exercises into you guys' life and the dog is gonna pick up on it. Just be patient. You didn't have as much time to prepare, but that doesn't mean it can't happen. Before we start, Carrie has a very important piece of advice. I don't use fake babies in dog training throughout this video because I don't want you to get a false sense of confidence that just because your dog is doing and obeying the commands with the fake baby that it's going to be the same picture when you have your real newborn in your arms. We have no way of telling how this dog perceives what you're carrying around in your arms. And for, for the safety of your baby, I never want my dog to think what I'm carrying in my arms is a toy. <laughs> Let's get started. If your dog is accustomed to going on walks with you, it is fair that your dog should continue to go on walks with you after your baby is born. If you don't include your dog in walks like you have done before, your dog could develop anxiety and frustration from being left behind. Anxiety and frustration can cause excessive barking, digging, or even cause your dog to become destructive. You've taught your dog to heal next to you, but now you need to show them how to heal next to the stroller. This is also a great way for the family to bond. One of my favorite things to do in my third trimester of being pregnant was taking my dog with me on stroller walks. Not only did the doctors tell me that it could induce labor, which for me, I, I was just anxiously awaiting for my newborn, but it just also gave me that like, quiet time with the dogs and to enjoy nature and just really cherish the moments before the baby came. Heal is a command that is commonly used when you want your dog to walk next to you. In order to teach your dog this command next to the stroller, you first must teach him to walk next to you in proper position. After you're confident that your dog understands how to walk next to you with a loose leash and without pulling, then you can practice taking your dog on walks with an empty stroller. Use treats or praise to reward your dog for being in the proper position next to the stroller. Once your dog is secure in walking alongside the stroller, make random stops and have your dog sit and wait until you begin to push the stroller again. It is important to remember when walking your dog next to the stroller to never tie the leash to the stroller, 
never allow the dog to cross in front of the stroller, and Carrie does not recommend using a retractable leash for stroller walks. The nursery is the one room that you don't want your dog to be allowed to come into because there's going to be plenty of times where you want to do tummy time with your baby on the floor and it's nice not to have the one room with dog hair in it and also because your dog needs boundaries. Uh, they need to see you interacting with the baby and know that that's you guys' quality time together and they can watch from the, the doorway but they're not necessarily allowed to come all the way into the nursery. You eventually want your dog to see you interacting with your baby but he should not be allowed to enter the room. Create an invisible boundary at the doorway that your dog is not allowed to cross. By using body gestures, you can easily show your dog he is not allowed to cross the invisible boundary line of the doorway. Practice walking into the room when your dog is following you. When your dog crosses the doorway, turn towards your dog and say, No! Then gently guide him back out of the room. After many repetitions, your dog will learn to stop and wait at the doorway. Carrie strongly urges you to shut your door to your nursery when your baby is asleep in a bassinet or crib if your dog is free to roam your house. It is for the protection of your baby. A lot of dogs are used to being allowed up on furniture and on the bed. And that could work for your family, but it's not going to work once the baby gets here. You're going to want to start showing the dog that they can be comfortable on the floor or on a place because for the safety of your baby, you don't want the dog either jumping up on the sofa when the baby's there or at night, if you're used to you know, bringing your dog in the bed at night, nobody's going to get a good night's sleep. Aside from the fact that your dog could easily step on your baby, it's just, it's not a good idea. Additionally, you never want a situation where your dog challenges your baby over a spot on the furniture. Start incorporating an off command so your dog understands what you're asking. Saying, no, off, simply tells your dog to remove itself from that area. Anytime you remove an undesired behavior, like getting on furniture, you should replace it with something positive. My favorite command in dog training is a place. Places are anything that the dog finds comfortable. It could be a dog bed, something that you put on the floor. And the reason I like it so much is because it's not like you're assigning your dog to a sit or a down. They have the freedom to move about the place. It just gives you a longer duration of a stay. Place is a command that can be used to relocate your dog from the furniture or bed. Use a dog bed or something comfortable for your dog to rest on. The relocation place can be mobile, and it is also okay to have more than one place around the house. If you catch your dog on the furniture, say, no, off, and then bring your dog over to the appropriate place. Give your dog treats on the place so that he associates the new bed with reward. The more you reward a behavior, the more likely your dog is to repeat it. Having an away command in training, it gives you the ability to tell your dog like, hey, I need some space. So if you're holding the baby and say the dog's just getting over, overly curious or, or he could just be pushy, you can tell the dog, give me my space, I'm with the baby. Teaching away to your dog will help when he is being too pushy or even just overly curious during interactions with you or your baby. Your dog needs to learn to respect you and your baby's space. Don't allow your dog to constantly come up to you and your baby to be petted. This is a dog demanding attention, and you don't want your dog competing with your baby for your attention. Don't treat your dog as a sibling to your new baby. They are not equals. Your dog needs to respect your baby and your space when you are together. Up until now, your dog may be used to always getting your attention, especially when you sit at their level. Start by sitting on the couch, and when your dog comes over, say, away, then toss some treats. Practice this randomly. Once your dog understands to move away from you, then you're ready to try it while sitting on the floor and eventually while carrying objects. I love how excited dogs are every single time you walk through the door. No matter if you've been gone for five minutes or if you've been gone for the entire day, I mean, my dog is always just like, oh, hey, hi, nice to see you. It's not gonna be a good thing though when you have the baby and you're walking through the door with the baby in your arms. 
So having a, a solid away command allows the dog to give you the space when you walk through the front door until things settle down. You can take the baby out of the car seat, put your stuff down, and then invite the dog over to say hi to you. If you have a dog that is accustomed to charging the door or jumping up on guests, this needs to be addressed before your baby arrives. Your dog is allowed to be excited, but should understand that he is not allowed to have contact with you. From Carrie's experience, using the away command may help in the future when you are entering your home while carrying your car seat. This can be taught by having treats available to toss immediately when you enter your house. When your dog runs over to you, say, away, then toss the treats. Following, ignore your dog for a few minutes. Once everybody has settled in, then you can say hello to your dog and invite him over. Most dogs love to go on car rides. And in my experience, I've traveled all over the world with my dogs and also meeting clients all the time at parks. Dogs are more content riding being secured. So whether that means you put them in the back hatch of the car or you seatbelt them in, a dog is happier when they are confined to the vehicle. Think of it as if you were going for a ride on a school bus and you didn't have a seat. By the end of the ride, you're going to be anxious, you're just going to be overwhelmed, and your dog feels the same way. So figure out where you want your dog in the car before the baby comes. Up until now, your dog may not be used to sharing the back seat. For the safety and well-being of everybody, it is best to either safety belt your dog in position or get him comfortable riding in the back hatch or in a crate. Furthermore, dogs that are in the habit of jumping into the front seat, barking at passing cars or people, or flying out of the driver's side door are unsafe for your baby when traveling. This behavior may lead you to stop taking your dog places with you. As a result, the dog can become less socialized. Install your baby's car seat in your vehicle ahead of time and decide where and how your dog will ride when your baby is in your vehicle. When I was creating this video, I was standing outside of my dog kennel and I, I was watching the dogs just running and playing and there was a particular dog that got hurt and started yelping and all the dogs ran over in a panic to to this one dog and it made me realize at that second newborn cries are very alarming just as much as this dog yelping was an alarm for for the other dogs so recreating uh, the baby cry noises is huge for your dog so that you desensitize them for what's about to happen and newborn cries are meant to be an alarm for the mom so they get up and they tender to the baby right away and one of the most fascinating parts when I was making this video is I had every breed of dog ages uh, dogs that have been around kids before and what I would do is I would play the newborn sounds for these dogs and I would watch their reactions. And I could tell so much from their initial reaction to the first time I played these sounds, what training was gonna have to happen in order to properly prepare the dog for the baby coming. Exposing your dog to baby cries and sounds will help your dog be better prepared for when your baby arrives. You can do this by downloading baby sounds and playing them on your tablet or smartphone. Newborn cries are unique and are meant to be an alarm. Dogs are naturally inquisitive and reactive to sounds. Knowing this, if you have an easily excitable dog, he can be very unsettling to you as a new parent. In some cases, dogs can become overstimulated by a newborn crying, especially when the newborn is screaming and moving simultaneously. Dogs are also known to react aggressively to the sound of another injured dog or a dog in panic, causing them to attack it. You can prepare your dog to reduce the risk of either of these reactions by desensitizing them to a newborn's crying and screaming. Desensitizing means to make indifferent, unaware, or non-reactive. In order for this to be achieved, you will have to randomly play the baby crying sounds so your dog eventually has no response to them. It is important to recognize your dog's initial response to the first time you play the sounds. If your dog exhibits intense focus towards the sounds or has a history of becoming agitated by noises made from babies, children, or other pets, it may be an indicator of predatory behavior. He should never be left unsupervised, especially around infants or children, and you should seek professional training assistance. 
every time my daughter started crying, my Malinois would think it was time for them to grab their toys and bring it over to me and the baby to help out in whatever way they thought they could. So I needed to give them a job to do. And what I did was I incorporated the place command so that every time she cried, they didn't go into this panic of, okay, what do we need to be doing? And they're whining and grabbing their toys. Instead, they calmly knew this is time where I need to go over to my place. Teaching a place when your baby cries gives the excitable dog a job. It is extremely important that your dog is never the first one attending to your crying baby because of the safety concerns stated in the desensitizing section. Also, baby cries can create anxiety and restlessness for your dog, and by having a job for him to do, can reduce unnecessary stress. You can teach your dog to go to its place by playing the baby crying sounds and then taking them over to his place bed. Once he is on his place, start rewarding your dog with treats. This will teach your dog that when he hears the baby crying, to go to his place, instead of responding to you attending to your baby. When you're bringing home all this new baby equipment that you're getting, have your dog be a part of it. Have them be there when you open up the boxes and put this new piece of equipment right there where their dog bed used to be, or you're moving things around. Have the dog just, just feel like it's, it's being involved in the changes. And that way, we just wanna uh, decrease as much stress for the dog as we can. Dogs are naturally curious and it will be less stressful for them if the changes occur over time. Include your dog in preparing your house for your baby. You should rearrange furniture and add all the new baby supplies so your dog can properly adjust. Encourage your dog to explore the new items. Play the sounds that the new baby toys make so that your dog can investigate them. Show your dog the baby swings and bouncy chairs and also that they can vibrate and move and swing. Baby gates are a great tool to have with your dog because you want to involve them in as many activities you can with the baby, but there's also gonna be times where you want to possibly like doze off and take a nap, or you might have to step away from the baby for a second, and we never want the dog and the baby to be in a room together where we're not there. All interactions with the dog and the baby are supervised. Start teaching your dog to be independent of you by using baby gates. Your dog should be kept in eyesight so that he still feels included, but it is important for your dog to understand that healthy alone time is acceptable and that he does not need to always be attached to your side. Try to have interactive toys for your dog to play with when he is behind the baby gate. This will help him stay busy. Remember, you never want to have your baby and dog together unsupervised even when you're in the same room napping. Any time that you have a situation where you can't 100% give all of your supervision, then put the dog behind a baby gate and give them a toy, some sort of interactive toy for them to chew on and let them see you, but at the same time know, okay, I have that control that if I doze off, I'm not gonna wake up to the dog licking my baby's face. When I was watching videos online with the babies and the dogs uh, interacting with each other around the food bowl, it absolutely frightened me. And the reason why is this could, in the beginning, it could go great. You could be like, wow, this is so cute. Look at it. my dog just loves my baby coming up and playing with its food. And it can change in an instant. And it all depends. It's all about resources. Uh, food and water are resources for the dog. Say, for example, maybe because you're up all night, you didn't put that bowl of water down for the dog. And the dog is extremely thirsty. And here you are. You put the water down, dog goes over to drink its water, and now the baby's crawling up. And before, when the dog had access to water 24 hours a day, it was no problem. But now that water is, is a higher value than it used to be. And this, in turn, could cause for your dog to snap at your baby. And I, I don't want you to be shocked, like, oh, how did that happen? Dogs are dogs, they're animals, and they're unpredictable. So we wanna keep our baby as safe as we possibly can. So what I do is I put my dogs either in a separate room or in a crate and I say, hey, now's your time to eat. No one's gonna bother you, eat your food. You should add as much structure as possible into your dog's feeding routine to decrease his stress level. Having your dog on a scheduled feeding will help him be prepared for the upcoming changes that are about to happen around the house. If you normally leave your dog's food bowl down all day with food in it, now is the time to change your routine and schedule feed. 
At first, your dog might not eat the entire bowl because they are used to picking throughout the day. Just pick up the remaining food in the bowl and put it down at the next feeding. It may take the dog a week to adjust. Also, get used to feeding your dog in his crate or a room where your baby eventually can't get to his food. It's a good idea to take your dog to a boarding kennel or have whoever's going to be walking the dog come over a few times before the baby comes. We don't want the dog to be stressed during this time and if you've never boarded your dog before, you definitely want them to be comfortable with the place that you're going to board them or you can even do maybe a few doggy daycare days so that the dog is like, hey, I'm familiar with this place or I know this person who's coming over to walk me and that will make you feel much more confident and comfortable when you're in the hospital that everything at home is being taken care of with the dog. You don't have to worry about it. The last thing you need to worry about in the hospital is if your dog is being exercised and fed. You also don't want your partner to have to come and go from the hospital during such an emotional time to care for your dog. If your dog has never been watched by someone else or been boarded before, it is important for him to become accustomed to that individual or boarding facility before you have your baby. Have your sitter watch your dog periodically or arrange a few days for your dog to stay at your chosen boarding facility. When picking your dog up, it is important to not be overly excited. Be neutral about the greeting, in order to show your dog that time away from you should not cause him anxiety. I want to share my personal story with you when I was in the hospital. For as much as I have planned and prepared for my dog and the baby, one thing I could have done better is plan and prepare who was going to be watching my baby when we were in the hospital. I originally, my husband and I had this master plan that, you know, we were just going to have this natural birth and we were going to go in, have the baby and leave the next day. Obviously, we we're first time parents and everything that we thought was in our plan, it completely changed. I had somebody prepared to watch the dog for maybe two or three days and we ended up having to stay in the hospital five days. And I have Belgian Malinois who they need to get out, they need exercise. And I should have done a better job having a plan B just in case, like in my situation, I had to stay longer. Also, when I was in the hospital, because we found out that we had to stay a little bit longer, it, st it stunk. I had to send my husband home and check on the dogs and it wasn't, I, I just remember just being there alone with the baby and just being like, oh, oh no, when is he coming back? <laughs> and I don't want that to have to happen to you guys with your families. <laughs>much to do with the behavior of your dog because dogs were bred for specific reasons and knowing and understanding this is going to help you be better prepared for what your dog is going to need and knowing this before your baby comes you can have your outlets that when you have downtime with the baby you're giving the dog what it needs so that it's able to fit into you guys as families dogs are animals with genetic needs and desires by becoming familiar with your individual dog's breed specifics, it will help you and your dog better communicate. Carrie urges you take the time to research the needs of your dog. By understanding these needs, you will be able to make sure your dog is getting the training and exercise he needs to properly fit into your family's lifestyle. The AKC, American Kennel Club, recognizes about 160 breeds of dogs, and they categorize them into seven groups. Sporting dogs, hounds, working dogs, terriers, toy dogs, non-sporting dogs, and herding dogs. I work with all different breeds of dogs, and every time I have my initial evaluation with a client, the first question I ask them is I say, what is your main behavior problem or complaint? And it blows my mind that 90% of the answers of what their problems are are characteristics of the breed of the dog that they have. Um, for example, I had a client and they had a Portuguese water dog and they did not want the Portuguese water dog swimming in their pool. So I, you know, politely had to remind them that they chose a dog that loves water. Or if you have a Australian cattle dog and your complaint is that it runs up and down the fence barking, 
or it's chasing your children down and biting their ankles. I, I again, you know, breed the breed of dog that you have, there are characteristics. That's why we bred them is so that we can keep similar characteristics. So you have to know and understand your dog. Going far back in history, the reason dogs were domesticated was because they had skills and behavioral traits that made them useful to humans. The different breeds we have today were created to establish lines of dogs that had similar characteristics, personalities, and behaviors. Knowing this information will help you read your dog and understand his training needs. If you have a mixed breed dog, you can see resemblances from different groups. It is also important to keep in mind that any dog from any group can bite. Here are the seven dog breed group's characteristics. Sporting dogs were bred to help man hunt. These dogs tend to be alert and eager to participate and please. Hounds are also hunting dogs, but were designed to work without human guidance. They are genetically wired to use their noses, and as a result, that can make them easily distractible. These dogs are more aloof and independent. Working dogs were bred to guard property, territory, and also used to hunt. They tend to be intelligent and capable animals, usually bigger in size and strength. Terriers were bred originally to hunt and kill vermin. The natural scrappiness of the terrier was enhanced to make these dogs tough and willing to fight, and they can have a high prey drive towards small animals. In certain terrier breeds, the fight drive was accentuated and used for illegal dog fighting. Toy dogs were bred to be cuddled and make great companions. They are popular and easily recognized. Non-sporting dogs are sturdily built dogs with very different personalities and appearances. Herding dogs were bred to control and protect livestock. They are task-oriented and driven, and will find something to herd or protect. They work alongside and under the direction of human leadership. Having the dog kennel, I really got to experience all the different dog breeds and different personalities. And I love it. I love to just be standing back and just having a group of dogs playing and just observing, observing how you have some dogs that are the life of the party and you have other dogs that are just sitting off to the side, very aloof, just like almost waiting for their owners to get back. And dogs like people have different personality types. And when you know and you recognize this, you can better prepare your dog for the upcoming changes. You can and say, I know my dog is a little standoffish, or I know my dog is wild, and whoever comes through that door, it doesn't matter who they are, they're just gonna and be all over them. So understand your dog's personality. Dogs, like people, have different personalities. Understanding your dog's personality is like getting to know a friend. Your dog's personality traits can give you an indication of how he will react in various situations, around strangers, new environments, and most of all, small children. Being a responsible dog owner means having control of your dog at all times and accepting his personality. Here are some examples of different dog personalities. Happy, outgoing, independent, confident, shy, insecure, or aggressive. <laughs> it is important to know that personality types can also intertwine. Dog bites are caused by a accumulation of stressors that can build up over time. And people have to understand that dogs do not bite without warning. Dogs always have a warning sign that they give before they bite. A lot of the times I'll be talking to clients and they will say to me like, I was so surprised. I never expected it. I never saw it coming. And that's not true. As I get deeper and deeper into the conversation about what happened, give me the details of the scenario or give me a history of your dog, I can sit there and I can say, okay, this stressor has been building, this stressor. And finally it gets to a point to where the dog has so many stressors that it resorts to biting. It is extremely important as the parent to actively reduce the stress that can build in your dog. You can help your dog by managing your home environment in preparation for your new baby, desensitizing your dog to baby cries, and giving your dog coping behaviors, otherwise known as basic obedience. All of these new skills are demonstrated in this video. These examples are to help you take the precautionary steps with your dog to reduce the new stress that is happening with the arrival of your baby that if otherwise ignored, will begin to accumulate. Dogs handle stress differently. You might have a dog that can tolerate a lot, a lot of 
kids pulling and tugging and poking and then you might have the other dog that can't handle any of this that even looks at a kid and, and just gets stressed out. Dog bites have risen in number and severity over the last few decades. Children are the most frequent targets of reported dog bite injuries. The CDC reports the odds that a dog bite victim will be a child are more than three to one. A dog's bite threshold depends on how much stress the dog can handle. If your dog has a high bite threshold, that means it can tolerate higher amounts of stress before resorting to biting. So an example would be is if your baby pulls on the dog's ears over and over and over again. And finally, on the 50th pull, the dog said, okay, I can't do it anymore, bites the baby. Then you could have the other side of that where you could have a dog that has a very low bite threshold. And what that means is the baby could be crawling over, reaching out, just getting ready to pull the ear one time, and the dog says, uh-uh, that I can't tolerate that, bites the baby. It is important to emphasize that any dog, and even dogs that have been raised around children, are capable of biting. By recognizing your dog's individual stressors, such as visitors coming and going, baby crying, or a change of routine around the house, you can help control these stressors and not allow them to build up. Remember, it is often not an individual stressor that results in your dog biting. It is a buildup of stressors over time without relief that causes your dog to bite. A dog will not bite without warning, but they will bite when all their warning signals go unnoticed or are disregarded. Many dog bites could be prevented if parents knew how to read their dog's warning signals. A lot of this information that I'm giving to you, you might be thinking like, I've been raised around dogs my whole life, or I, dogs have always been around kids and families. And I'm talking about that, that percentage. And even if it's a small percentage, it still has to do with the safety of your baby. And you don't want to be the person. You don't want to have that guilt inside that, oh my goodness, I could have prevented my baby from getting bitten or getting seriously injured if I was more responsible managing my dog. The next section is very serious, and every dog owner must be aware because it can help reduce situations that could lead to your dog biting. Dogs communicate with us through body language when they're getting stressed. And recognizing these stressors ahead of time before your baby gets here is crucial to understanding when your dog is getting into a situation that they don't feel comfortable with. Body language is a system of communication that you can easily start to recognize. It's our job to recognize their stressors so that we don't put them in situations that they can't handle, especially around our baby. We need to recognize when the dog's getting stressed and allow them either to remove themselves, give themselves more space to adapt to the baby, or we need to be able to say, I notice my dog's getting a little bit uncomfortable now, I'm going to intervene so that we don't ever push the dog or put them in a situation that could lead them to bite. Once you better recognize your dog's body language, then you can begin to interpret and read your dog's intentions. The purpose of doing this is to help you predict your dog's behavior in various circumstances so that you can handle them appropriately. Some important signals to watch for in your dog, especially around small children, are avoidance and displacement behaviors. It is important to add that even an expert in this field can misread a dog's body language and stressors. These next set of behaviors, they're called avoidance behaviors. And this is our dog trying to tell us, I'm uncomfortable, I'm anxious, I need either to be able to remove myself for this, from the situation or have my person intervene so that I don't get stressed to a point that I could potentially bite. Avoidance behaviors are signs that indicate your dog is uncomfortable or getting stressed. Some examples of avoidance behaviors include, the dog gets up and leaves, or by turning his head away. Some dogs will try hiding. Others react to stress by barking and or retreating. This dog is showing the whites of his eyes. This is commonly known as half moon eye and is a familiar expression in dogs that are being hugged. It is a sign that the dog just wants to be left alone. Crawling can indicate stress, as can growling or showing teeth. Displacement behaviors are behaviors that dogs would normally do, but they do out of context. So this is something important to watch for. Displacement behaviors indicate conflict and anxiety. Some examples are 
licking chops without the presence of food, yawning, sudden sniffing of the ground or other objects, wet dog shake when the dog is not wet or dirty, and trembling when it is not cold. It is advantageous for your dog to display these behaviors. Therefore, never punish your dog for showing they are uncomfortable or stressed. If you punish a dog for any of these behaviors, you might suppress the signals your dog is trying to use to communicate with you, and that could lead them to bite without warning. Never force a dog to stay in a situation where they feel anxious, especially if babies are the source of their anxiety. It is your job to recognize the body language your dog is displaying and react accordingly. So it's your job to make sure that all interactions around babies, around children, are a positive experience for the dog. Relaxed and happy dogs communicate through body language as well. Here are some examples. Relaxed body and muscles, tail and ears, kept in natural position, or tail wagging in a circular or side-to-side -side motion, and relaxed face muscles. When I was doing the research uh, beforehand, I asked friends and family, anybody who had babies, what do you do to prepare your dogs for your baby? And they said, I put this article of clothing in from the infant and I let my dog smell it. That's how I prepare my dog. It is a common practice in hospitals for a nurse to give new parents an article of clothing containing their newborn scent in order to have their family dog sniff it before he meets the baby. Carrie disagrees with this practice. As we were leaving the hospital, a nurse walked in and was with our paperwork and said, oh, okay, I see that you have a dog, so here I wanted to give you this. And she hands me a Ziploc bag with a beanie in it, obviously the beanie that was on my baby at some point in the hospital. I asked the nurse, I said, what is this for? And she's like, this is so that your dog can smell your baby so that your dog likes your baby before you bring it home. And I realized that this is a, a myth. I mean, this is, this is an old wives tale. It doesn't have, it makes no dog training sense whatsoever. You have to realize that if you just bring home this beanie and have your dog smell it, it's like smelling a stranger. We have no idea how he perceives the smell. He could perceive it as a potential threat. Studies have been conducted in this area, and researchers have found the specific regions in a canine's brain that indicate a positive emotional-like response were activated when exposed to the smell of a human being with whom he has a positive, familiar relationship. Furthermore, Carey believes that if the dog pairs the baby's scent with his owner's scent, then it will increase the chance of him associating the positive, familiar odor with the baby. Therefore, Carey's method is as follows. When introducing the article of clothing from your infant, it is important that you also pair an article of clothing that the dog would recognize either from the mother or the father, something with a familiar scent on it that the dog has a positive association with. Present your baby scent to your dog before they meet by having your dog smell an article of clothing from yourself and an article of clothing from your baby. Remember, it is necessary for your dog to pair these smells to improve the possibility of your dog having a positive reaction to the new odor of your infant. It's a personal decision when you decide to introduce your newborn baby and your dog. I knew for myself, with my older dog, I wanted to introduce them immediately. It was important to me because he's, he's my house dog. He's used to being with me 24 hours a day, and I knew it would have completely stressed him if he knew that we were inside and he was outside. With that being said, I also hadn't seen him for five days, and I knew that he was going to be just super excitable. So what we had to do was I waited in the truck while my husband got out, let him run, let him go to the bathroom, and then he played with him for about 10, 15 minutes just to wear him out, just to take the edge off so that he wasn't too overly excited. When introducing your dog to your newborn for the first time, someone else, he'll be referenced as dad, should be in charge of handling the dog and you should hold the baby. Even if the dog is considered yours, you will not be in the physical condition to handle him. A leash and collar should be put on the dog to keep the interaction controlled. The meeting should not take place at the front door because normally there is a lot of excitement in that area. Allow time for yourself and your newborn to get settled in. Dad should have the dog on the leash 
and wait for him to show curiosity and walk over to greet you or to investigate the new baby. Do not force the interaction or bring the baby to the dog. Once the dog initiates walking towards you, then dad can follow the dog over while holding the leash. The next step is for you to slightly bend over and allow the dog to sniff the baby's feet and bottom. The first sniffing interaction should last no more than 15 to 20 seconds. Praise your dog for gently sniffing the baby. If the dog is getting too pushy or overly curious, stand straight up and allow for dad to regain control of the dog. Once the dog is done showing interest, you can sit on the couch. Dad holds the leash the entire time, and at any point you can stand with the baby so that dad can regain control of the dog if needed. After a few minutes of everybody interacting, dad should help the dog to settle into a down position, or there can be a place bed in the living room so that the family can reconnect in a controlled environment. Nothing in this process should ever feel rushed or stressed. The most important principle after you introduce your baby and dog is to accept and respect your dog's initial reaction to the new arrival. If communicated, allow your dog his space and as much time as he needs to adapt to the new situation. Remember, do not leave your dog and baby unattended in any circumstances, even if your dog is accepting to your new baby. If your dog displays any aggression towards your new baby, seek professional training help immediately. With my younger competition dog, I needed to wait. I didn't want to rush it. He is super excitable. He, I knew having the baby, he, I mean, he's super loving, but at the same time, I just didn't have that, that same secure feeling that I have with my older dog. And it didn't happen. I, I didn't have a plan. I didn't set a date. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do. It's a feeling of when you're ready, of when you're calm and you're relaxed. And I was sitting outside on the deck and I had my baby. I remember it was perfectly sunny day and I just was like, okay, now's the time. And I told my husband, hey, go get the other dog. It's time for him to meet the baby. And he just went along with it because you're the mommy. You have the instincts now. You know and you're going to protect this little baby. And for me, it was all about just making sure that she was as safe as she could be. When my husband and I were taking birthing classes, they really pushed the fact that they do not want moms handling the anything, dogs, as, as no housework, um, the least amount of physical activity that you can do for at least two weeks. And you know, obviously my first thought is, is what about my dogs? I take them on walks, I throw the frisbee with them. So it's important that you have either your husband or a family member that's going to help you out. Do not handle your dog until your doctor or midwife has given you the proper authorization. Dad or someone else should be ensuring your dog is getting the adequate exercise and receiving interactive toys until you are physically able to handle him. Remember to avoid isolating your dog outside because it can cause him stress, resulting in undesirable behaviors. Including your dog in as many jobs around the house as possible will help make for a healthy transition. As we come to the conclusion of this video, Carrie wants to share another important piece of information that can help keep your baby safe. There's a new trend that's been going around that I've been seeing more pictures on the internet and it's taking photos with your newborn baby and your dog. It's it's not cute. It's not. As a trainer, first off, when I see the pictures, my palms are sweating and I'm just like, oh, oh, please, because dogs are unpredictable. And here you are, you're putting this 10 day old baby on top of your dog's back and, and asking your dog to do this perfect downstay for this photo when in an instant, like even if that dog is the most trained dog in this world, you can't control the environment. Say there's a noise outside, something startles the dog, the light, something, and that dog gets up and runs away. You have your 10 day old baby on its back. It's not a trend that I want to continue. It's not safe. Now, if you wanted to take uh, shots with your baby and your dog and you had it in a controlled way, I love it. Give it to me. I, I mean, this is great. Do I love dogs and I love my baby, but my priority is always going to be the safety of my baby. We learned all these techniques throughout the video and now it's time to show him the picture with your baby. So have confidence that you've practiced and you've prepared your dog in as many ways as you can for the safety of your new baby. 
Let's review what your dog's new jobs are around the house and the different scenarios you will encounter during your new life with your baby. Your dog stays outside the invisible boundary line at the door of the nursery while you change your baby. While you are napping with your baby, your dog is behind a baby gate. When your baby is crying, your dog goes to his place command. As you enter your house with your baby, command your dog away. When going for a car ride, your dog has an assigned spot in the car. Your dog is behind a baby gate while your baby is playing on the floor. When you are changing your baby's diaper on the floor, your dog goes to his place. Healing your dog next to your stroller once you are physically capable. After a few walks with the dog and the baby in the stroller, the dog started realizing like, hey, there's, there's something in there and she's kind of cool. And one of the last times I was taking them on a walk together, I was pushing, it was right at the beginning of the walk, I started pushing the stroller and my dog just kind of lifted his nose and peeked in the stroller and just real quick and just got out and just started walking and I just, I loved it. I mean, it, it was, it brought so much joy to my heart that this dog that has been with me through everything in my life and, and now it gets to be with me this next part of my life. Congratulations on your expected baby. Thank you for sharing.